That's your best protection. Uh, I mean, did she say anything else? She said the White House on down, both parties, anything else? Well, um, she also was very emphatic that she didn't know most of the people, only that she would watch the caller ID. So um, that's, she knew people by their wrong names. They would use alias names. So she really didn't know her clients directly uh, by their real name. So, you know, it's, uh, unless it came over to caller ID. <laughs> so uh, uh, I do know that she... Uh, when I called her, she'd say, hello, Joe, so she knew it was me calling. So, um, But you're saying she said, quote, from the White House on down, both parties? Yes. Anything else she said to you in the times you talked to her? No, just a lot of very influential people. And, and that uh, uh, many of the customers were uh, clients. She always made sure and said clients. She was very professional. Uh, were from the D.C. area. Mike uh, Rivero, in the minute or so we've got left, any other key points you want to ask uh, our guests, Mr. Streisand? Um, well, this is consistent with what uh, uh, Deborah Jean had said on both of our shows. And uh, when we come back, though, because I know we're close to the end of the break, I want to bring up the subject of an intelligence operation that had penetrated her database uh, that she'd expressed to me on my show. No, she said that here, too. She said they were using her group of 15,000 clients as a hunting ground. Uh, absolutely, and it raises the possibility there's a third party with the motive to have killed her. Okay. Uh, Mr. Streisack, any other key points you want to add that you haven't added? No, uh, that's, that's about it. Well, just, again, you know, I just feel that uh, Deborah Jean was a very nice person. She did not deserve to die in vain. You know, she, the truth needs to come out. And you don't believe she committed suicide? Oh, that, no, to know Jeannie, no, she wouldn't commit suicide. She was not that type of person. Do you believe this was murder? Yes. We appreciate your courage, uh, Mr. Streisack. We're all praying for you and everybody else. Please get us that handwriting as fast as you can, okay? Well. Thank you. You're the best. We'll stay in contact. Take care. We'll be right back with Mike Rivera. We are now into hour number three. Mike Rivera with us for another 15 minutes and Steve Shank popping in for a segment or two to talk about what's happening in the world food economy. We'll look at free speech in England and how you get fired if you state your political opinions in the supposed free nation uh, with one of their former top national hosts fired. James Whale joining us coming up in the fourth hour today. Uh, Mike Rivera, uh, quite an incredible interview uh, with this gentleman whose info meshes with everything we got I just wish I could have gotten her on air to say it was going to be murder if she died. She did tell him that, but, you know, she just said that it sounded ridiculous to say that on air. I think as smart as she was, uh, she didn't realize that they were, you know, people think they don't get killed. That people, you know, she said she was paranoid. No, that was her feeling the wings of the angel of death flapping around her head. Uh, you know, she said she could, quote, sleep good, you know, felt secure uh, in that uh, high-security condo, uh, but uh, she's dead now, and... I see this M.O., one of their favorite tactics. I believe it was probably police that killed her uh, because it fits the uh, favorite tactic of police hitmen. What do you say? Well, uh, the exact mechanism almost is kind of irrelevant. Uh, the, the issue is that we're definitely dealing with suspicious circumstances here. Uh, these su supposed suicide notes were written apparently a few days in advance and dated, which is kind of odd for a suicide note. And there are a lot of questions, and it does need to be looked at. But the bottom line is that there were people who did have a motive uh, to see uh, Palfrey dead. Now that she, her case was over and she was going to jail and she had a book deal, uh, she had no reason to hold back any of the little uh, bits of information she'd been using as a final chip. And so a lot of that stuff was going to come out. And the key, now, the she tried to have her lawyers declare a national security clause for secret admittance of evidence showing that she was probably part of an intelligence operation. That's what Wayne Madsen's saying. And you were talking about a third party having her killed. Give us your take. Well, the, the idea was that what Palfrey had said on my show was not that she herself was running an intelligence operation, but that somebody's intelligence operation had penetrated her company and was uh, glomming onto information about various political leaders who were uh, kind of a little kinky out there. Now, we all know probably it's common... Probably Brandy Britton, where it all started, and she shot her mouth off, then she hung herself when she was only facing six months in jail. 
Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, you know, it's one thing you have politicians who will, like, uh, get embarrassing information about a candidate or, or an opponent to get rid of them. But if you have an intelligence operation that is using this kind of information to blackmail politicians to get them to go a certain direction, you don't want that information to become public because then these politicians are no longer of any use to you. You can't blackmail them. So they're, And, of course, you know, anybody... the masters of that are the British, the Russians, and the Israelis. And the Israelis, and if if they've got this information and they're blackmailing politicians with this embarrassing information, they don't want it to become public because then all the money they've invested in getting these people into these compromised positions is is gone. The honey trap is completely blown. So the, the it also makes them operation. look bad. Uh, do you, there's a lot of evidence that the Israelis were running uh, Monica Lewinsky. Do you think that's accurate? Yeah, I think that was accurate. They had her phones tapped at the Watergate. We know that the guy who was behind this Emperor's Club VIP that uh, resulted in Elliot Spitzer's downfall had two Israeli passports in his home along with $600,000 in cash. Uh, that one was quite probably an intelligence operation or all. And, and Honey Trap is a common uh, spy operation uh, tactic. It's used all the time. The Israelis are masters at that as well. And, uh, you know, once you've got somebody on that hook, you don't want them to get off. So whoever was using uh, uh, Palfrey's information to control politicians would want to silence her because if she went and exposed everything with a tell-all book, then they lose that ability to control these politicians. Now, uh, we know Carnaby was Middle Eastern in origin. Uh, that's been reported. His parents live in Beirut. The MO, the information we're getting right now uh, is uh, that Carnaby was somehow tied into all this. We'll get your take on that on the other side. Final segment with Mike Rivero, WhatReallyHappened.com. I'm Alex Jones. The real thing, but I saw an interesting statistic just this morning where half of all homes purchased since 2006, uh, more money is owed on the mortgages than the homes are now worth. And that means oh, yeah. more it's going to start walking away. It's going to be a disaster. And with everybody going bankrupt, you're going to have double cops running around giving everybody tickets and running checkpoints. I mean, it is just the squeeze, man. They're going to yeah, squeeze and squeeze is. and squeeze and squeeze. And uh, it, we're down to pillaging the population, which is why they're out there writing speeding tickets while, you know, murders and rapes and robberies are basically going uninvestigated because it's all about getting money from the population and this any cop way they that, can. this cop that posted a comment on InfoWars, he talks about how they're out busy doing important work. And I know they go to scum-filled crack houses and the rest of it, but the point here is is that uh, it is, the, the cops told me, and it's been in the news, that they don't arrest illegal aliens. And I'm not even after the illegal aliens. The point is they can drunk drive. They don't have to have IDs. They're left alone because the establishment wants to leave the door open. But then me, the citizen, I am just absolute trash, Mike. Well, you're, you're, you're not trash. You're the food. You are the food of the system. Your tax dollars and your earnings are the food of the system. Exactly. Is, I don't like it. Is, well, I don't like it either. I don't like being, uh, you know, we've become a cannibalistic society, if you think about it. Well, I agree. It's government like... and the elites live off of our work and off literally off our blood it's like being on the african savanna and uh, instead of seeing 10 lions every five miles like you're supposed to you see 500 i mean and they're just making more and more bureaucracies more and more tattletale squads they're cpsing people's kids for no reason now i mean folks you understand they're gonna do something they're gonna arrest you they're gonna get you do you know what it means when there's this many cops I i'm sorry mike i just i start ranting go ahead well, I understand that, but you're on a very valid point, because, I'm, and I made this observation on what really happened this morning. We have 5% of the world's population. We have 25% of the world's prisoners. Why? Because we've got prison industries, and these people are being put to work in these prison factories. This is what the Nazis had. All those camps that we see in the history books, they were slave labor camps. The prisoners in them were making products for the German people, or for the German government, rather, to support the war. They were making boots. They were making uniforms. It was prison labor, and we've got the same exact system here in the U.S. When Janet Reno was attorney general in her office at the Department of justice she had a sign on the wall saying all the furniture in this office is made by federal prison inmates they're proud of it they're proud that they're setting up the same kind of system that they had in the german labor camps the same system that the bush family made money off of when prescott bush was business partners and with by the Adolf way Hitler. the idiot public thinks good make them prisoners work you're competing against people getting 20 cents an hour 
And there's and no regu- and there's no regulators. You better know the prisons dump whatever they want in the river. It's Absol- absolutely true. And, and and we pay for the prisons and we pay for the infrastructure, but we don't even get the profits back from the prison labor. It goes to private corporations. Well, I mean, they're building more and more prisons, more and more cops everywhere in everybody's business. New tax authorities show up at my office all the time. I mean, I'm getting sick of it. I am really getting tired. I mean, this country is pathetic. And these cops think this is freedom. Mike Rivero, I really appreciate you, and we'll talk to you soon. What really happened? Thanks for your great contribution. Thank you for having me on.